mit einem H. Zwei oder drei oder vier oder was? Ist ich fühle mich immer als Marionette meines Vaters. Er hat nach wie vor die Fäden in der Hand. aus wie meine Vaterfamilie total und haben auch so ähnliche Sachen wie wir haben da. Du siehst ja genau wie dein Großvater aus. Ja, ich fühle mich glaube ich schon verantwortlich dafür, was er gemacht hat. Aber ich das deutsche Wort Jude benutze, kriege ich schon äh, 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 werde ich nervös und fange an zu schwitzen so ungefähr. Wenn du nicht aufhörst, dich rum zu erschießen, dann gehe ich. Und äh, er muss dann wenigstens in ihrem Beisein äh, nicht mehr geschossen haben. Was er wieder gemacht hat, wenn er im Lager gewesen ist, das ist wieder etwas ganz anderes. Molika's father shot hundreds of prisoners himself on his daily walks to the labor camp that he commanded. Alan Gett, the cruel commander of Plasho, made infamous by his portrayal in the film Schindler's List, was directly responsible for the camp's horrors. He was tried for war crimes in 1946 and sentenced to death by hanging. Monica used to believe that her father was a regular soldier who died on the Russian front. <laughs> Ich bin aber nicht der Ammann. Ich, ich, ich habe auch mit den Ammann eigentlich überhaupt nichts gemeinsam. Mein Bruder und ich, wir haben beide äh, uns entschlossen, also zu verschiedenen Zeiten diese, diese Operation zu machen, um Mehr oder weniger bewusst haben wir das gemacht, um, um keine weiteren Lösungen zu produzieren. Ne? Bettina Göring ist die Grand Niece von Hermann Göring, der der zentrale Figur im Nazi-Regime war und der Kommandor der Luftwaffe. Sentenzt zu Tod für Warcrimes in den Nuremberg-Trials, er hat den Suizid bei einer Kapsel der Cyanide-Kapsel am Ende seiner Exekution getötet. Ich habe mich äh, früher mehr verantwortlich, verantwortlich gefühlt für den Holocaust, während äh, ich weiß, dass also ich das natürlich selber nicht gemacht habe, weil ich danach geboren bin, aber ich habe mich verantwortlich gefühlt für meine Familie, die da einen aktiven pa Teil drin hatte. Deswegen habe ich eigentlich nie Angst gehabt, deswegen, dass ich sowas erben könnte, dass er in meinem Gehen so etwas sein könnte, nach dem Motto das böse Blut von Heinrich, weil dann, also ich glaube, wenn ich sowas denken würde, dann würde ich ja letztendlich die Nazis wieder bestätigen mit ihrer schwachsinnigen Überzeugung, dass alles nur vom Blut abhängt. Ich glaube nicht an so einen Scheiß. Heinrich Himmler, Catherine's great uncle, was second only to Hitler in the Third Reich, and the mastermind of the Nazi death machine. He was directly responsible for ordering the deaths of millions. Heinrich Himmler committed suicide in prison in 1945, the day after his identity was revealed. Catherine Himmler married an Israeli Jew, the son of Holocaust survivors from Poland. <laughs> Jedenfalls hob mich ein Mann in einem engen, dunklen Gang vor eine Gefängnistür, das war eine richtig schwere Tür. Und äh, da wurde die Klappe aufgemacht und ich sah durch und sah da eine eigentlich sehr junge Frau, für mich nur sehr gealte Frau. Also in meiner Inneren ein glattes Gesicht. Sie saß genau gegenüber auf so einer Pritsche, würde ich aber heute sagen, Pritsche weiß nicht mehr. Und die 
schaut eigentlich ganz äh, traurig und verehrt. Und ich fing an zu weinen, weil die ganze Spannung war mir zu viel für mich. Und dann sagte der Mann zu mir, du musst nicht weinen, das ist eine böse Hexe und morgen ist sie tot. Nicholas Frank was eight years old when his father, Hans Frank, was hanged at Nuremberg for war crimes. Hans Frank was personally appointed by Hitler to be the governor of Poland, and as such, he was in charge of the Polish death camps and responsible for the death of millions. Ich kann nicht meinen Vater lieben, der irgendwo voller Leichen hinterlassen hat. Die Mami zu mir kommt und mir sagt, Philipp, äh, und zwar zu mir und zu meiner Mutter, und zu uns, also erzählt, äh, der Opa äh, war ein Soldat und hat versucht, den Hitler umzubringen. Ich habe auch das Gefühl, mich zu erinnern, dass wir natürlich keine Schimmer davon richtig hatten, was Hitler, es war klar, das Wort Hitler bedeutete irgendwas Schlechtes. Klaus Schenk von Stauffenberg, Philipps Grandfather was a Nazi officer and the leader of the July 20th plot to kill Adolf Hitler in 1944. A day after the failed attempt, he was shot by a firing squad. In Germany today, von Stauffenberg has come to symbolize the German resistance to Hitler. But Philip still struggles with his family connection to the Nazi regime. Wenn ich gefragt werde, ob ich eine Verantwortung zum Beispiel jetzt gegenüber den Juden und der Judenverfolgung, ob ich da eine Verantwortung verspüre, wenn ich nur schon die Frage höre, kriege ich einen Klotz im Bauch und es fängt mich an runterzuziehen. Und es gibt nur zwei Wege, um zu überleben. Der eine ist, wie ein Teil meiner Geschwister, ihn zu verteidigen. Also zu fliehen, nicht anzuerkennen, dass er ein übler Verbrecher war. Oder es gibt meinen Weg, den ich zusammen mit meinem Bruder Norman gegangen bin, anzuerkennen, ja, dieser, unser Vater war ein Krimineller. After a childhood of repressed feelings and of difficulty in dealing with their family's dark history, the descendants of the Nazi top echelon delve into the past and confront the crimes of their nation. For the first time, they come face to face with victims of the Holocaust, intense, emotional, and often surprising meetings. <laughs> Yeah, 
שהכדורים היה יורה או בראש או בלב. זה היה גט. כדור אחת להרוג את שניהם. דה עמאן חטא קודם זרע אינשייד. הוא קודם להלפן, והוא קודם לא להלפן. אבל אני חושב שעמאן אינשייד היה בנסיון. הוא היה אופי על תיקון הדוח. והייתי עם אבא שלה 18 חודש. 18 חודש ברצח בלתי פוסק, אכזרי ביותר, עם חיוך וצחוק על הפנים, אם זה נשים, אם זה ילדים, והתחילו לבכות. וגם אתה לא עשו מגסה, לא עשו מוניקה, אבל היה נאצי, ודי נאצי זוהר ומצאו. ובין אלי צור גביזם ואירע מי אל גביזם איש. ‫אז wäre er nicht Kommandant ‫von einem Lager gewesen. ‫אולי זה יישמע מוזר. ‫בשבילי זה לא מוזר. ‫אני לא שונא את הגרמנים. ‫לא. ‫אני לא סלחתי ולא אסלח, ‫ולא שכחתי ולא אשכח, ‫אבל אני לא שונא. אם אני אשנא, אני לא אהיה יותר טוב מהם. היטלר's children will bring together for the first time the second and third generation descendants of the perpetrators and the victims of the Holocaust. Yes, thank you for speaking von diesen zwei Seiten, dass da sehr viel die einander sehen hätten können. Das ist in beide im Grunde auch voll von der ganzen Geschichte. Ne? Both sides, Germans and Israelis, will meet on a special journey to Israel and will confront their common past. Both sides will deal with their parents' legacies. But, most of all, we'll ask to move forward. As you can probably tell from this, this is a trailer for the, the full documentary, which I think Gail is not ready yet, is it? It's still being produced. Yeah, it's, it's not ready yet, but it will be in anyway. This is the name of it when it does go. I'm amazed at how familiar those faces are. The faces are almost identical to the, the parents or the grandparents that we're talking about, particularly Amon Getz's daughter. It looks like they just took a blonde wig and put it on top of Amon, and that's, that's exactly what he looks like. So it's, it's kind of scary watching those. Uh, the next one is a 60 minutes clip from I'm not sure how long, do you want to say something? Yeah, 60 minutes. No, it's, it's not 60 minutes from the program. <laughs> So, my uncle told me that they were together in Plashov with my father that Amon Geth would go in the camp and he had this hat on and then the rim was in one direction. They knew he was going to go around and kill someone. So they knew that they had to hide. And without in the other direction, it was okay. It was just for the hell of it. And I also think that, that um, some of them that, that said that they felt responsible maybe because they were never told the truth. And I think yeah. that maybe if the parents confronted it, they would not uh, share their, their feeling of being responsible for the parents. Are you able to raise 
to 12 inches so we can read the mm -hmm. words on the bottom? I think it won't be, this won't be no. subtitled. I think it's 60 no. minutes. I don't know what happened here. Anybody stop again? Well, I was thinking, I'd let you all watch this. <laughs> Today, Sunday, April 14th, is Holocaust Remembrance Day. It is 46 years since the last shots of the Second World War were fired, since the world learned the full horror of the Holocaust. The survivor stories are told and retold. They are etched in the memories of their children. But there's another group of children, German children now grown up, whose stories their fellow Germans do not want to hear. They are the children of the architects of that horror. They live silently, almost <coughs> invisibly, bearing the sins of their fathers. But three years ago, they were brought together as a group and found they were at last able to speak, at least to each other. Tonight, they speak to the world. Sunday, in a small house near a small town in Germany, around the dining table are gathered a group of middle-aged Germans. It is a chilling brother and sisterhood, this, each haunted in his or her own particular way. All of them are children of men who with determination, even pleasure, helped in the annihilation of millions upon millions of people. When they were children, hundreds of thousands of other German children were being rounded up and shipped to death camps. What must it be like to live with that knowledge? What must it be like to be Martin Bormann, the son of Martin Bormann? closest confidant of Adolf Hitler, a behind-the-scenes manipulator. After the war, at age 15, young Martin learned that his father was one of history's monsters. What did you think? What went through your mind? After the war, shame. But in the early years of the war, young Martin felt nothing but pride. He grew up in the privileged environment of the Nazi compound in Berchtesgaden near Hitler's mountain retreat. Eva Brown, Hitler's mistress, took these home movies with Borman's father, his mother, and even young Martin playing supporting roles to the pure star performance. Renata Rode's father was not in the inner circle, but was close to it. An SS commander, an organizer of Kristallnacht. The beginning of the persecution of Germany's Jews. He was personally responsible for the murder of half a million Jews in the Balkans. He was hanged in 1946. Renata wrote his mother had repeated tales of her father's heroism all through Renata's childhood. It was not until she did her own research that she discovered the truth about him. She was 38 years old. Mm, yes, and 11 years ago, at that moment, it was... Um Yes, it was terrible. What did you feel I mean, to make this kind of discovery? Uh, I think if I say uh, that it was a shock, I think it's not, these are not the right word. At each place setting a different catalog of horror. Gunnild's father was in charge of the euthanasia program in his district, the extermination of the crippled and retarded. She has not been able to sleep without sedatives for decades. She believes her father had her younger brother killed for the sin of being born with a club foot. Only when we uh, started to work in the group, I uh, I've been forced to accept that I have a father. Dirk Kuhl remembers his father, Gunter Kuhl, the chief of Gestapo for the city of Braunschweig. Hundreds of slave laborers at the Hermann Goering <coughs> factory died under his command. He was hanged by the British as a war criminal. 43 years later, his son, who was eight when his father was executed, is barely able to cope with it. 
I would have preferred to have another father. I would be happy, but I haven't. They all bear the curse of ancestry. Thomas Heidegger, age 60. He lives on the edge of madness. Son of a Nazi, nephew and godson of Reinhard Heidegger, head of the Gestapo. The author of The Final Solution, the dashing prototype of Hitler's perfect Nazi. The end of the war brought his nephew anything but peace. Hatte ich eigentlich von der ersten Sekunde an, actually from the very first second on, I had a feeling of guilt. It's really lunatic, because I was still only 14, 15 years old, and in fact couldn't have done anything. And nonetheless, immediately, I had the feeling I am guilty of that. Not co-guilty, but guilty. A long time I was afraid that I would be like my father, that I had something, the same evil, you know, something of this the evil. evil. The bad me. seed. Yes, when I got more self-confident, I was able to put him out, and I can look at him and say, uh, this is my father, and he has done terrible things, but I'm another person. Even if I am the daughter, I mean, it um, doesn't mean that I am, um, that I have uh, those evil things inside me. Today, Renata Roder teaches elementary school. She feels it is necessary to force the past on every generation of Germans. Otherwise, she says, there will be silence. Fellow Germans did not want to know about either collective or individual guilt. She and the others in the group were able to break their silence through the help of an unlikely man, a Jew. An Israeli psychologist, Dan Bar-On, brought them together to talk, enabled them to confess the sins of their father. Could it be that you, after 45 years, 40 odd years, that you were the first person to ask? I'm afraid so. At least these people that I talked to, I was the first person who really was interested to understand how they cope with it. Yes, but what can they do? I mean, it really is a case of the are you responsible for the sins of your father? Mm. They can't change the course of history. The things happen. That's finished. What they can do is psychologically to, to find some meaning on some way of working that through. And that's a very, very painful and difficult process to do. Part of the process is remembering. Young Borman was 15 when he learned Hitler was dead. He was in a military compound. One by one, officers left and a shot was heard. After the eighth man committed suicide, young Borman was handed a gun. I was stopped by a friend who uh, had the same uh, intention. I stopped him, he stopped me. <laughs> you talked to each other out of it. Huh? Why would you want to commit suicide? Age 15. You're absolutely helpless. And absolutely no future. In the confusion of the collapse of Germany, his father disappeared and was later declared dead. Young Borman was taken in by Catholic peasants in Austria. It was there that he learned the truth about his father. It was there he decided to convert to Catholicism and dedicate his life to God. You became a priest as an act of repentance and as, I guess, a th further act of repentance, you chose to go to the Congo very difficult place as a missionary. You were tortured in the Congo in the various wars. What did you learn from that? I learned that it is absolutely necessary to forgive. When were you able to forgive your father? It was necessary to forgive my father before, uh, before I, I could uh, become a priest. Did you hate him? No. You never hated him? Borman says he has two images of the man, of a beloved father who is separate from... Uh, from the <coughs> politician and all the terrible...